Contestant Club, yeah you know that's us Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us Where we motivate the people and politic on success Oh no we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best Contest, Uncle What's happening? It's Contrast of Cut. It's season three, episode 30. Man, big shout outs to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. Man, it's your host, Dilo, aka DJ Wine Dollars, like I want some money. Ladies and gentlemen, we got us a really dope special guest today. You know, he's out of Oakland, you know, throwing up, representing the town. He's a singer, yeah. a songwriter. You know, I first heard about you on Fizzler 2017 Rookie of the Year list. And, you know, that caught my attention. And, you know, I continued to research, you know, from then on. And, you know, I've noticed that you accelerated in the Bay. You got a unique style. And, you know, you're not afraid to uh, jump into your characters and, and delivering on, on music. And so, you know, right. with Fody, S-O-B-R-B-E, P-Lo, Be Legit, I Am Sue. On the Peasy, Nefta Faro, Project Papa, Jay Stalin, and many, many more. I mean, his latest yeah. sentence is out right now, smacking. 96, smacking. Aspen is smacking. I'm talking about JT the fourth, everybody. What's happening, brother? <laughs> right on, gangster. Right on, big dog. That was, that was a hell of an uh, intro for sure. Oh, that's so, how, how, how you feeling, bro? Man, you know, I can't complain. I'm out the way, you know, doing what I can from what I can do, you know. Sure, I already know. I already know. Man, bro, all I'm doing is talking about what you done, man. You know, the real is the real. You can't deny the real. So definitely can't. That's one thing you can't do. Deny the real. Come on. Come on. Man, bro, so I got this quote, bro. Let me know how this quote relates to you, or if it doesn't, the whole idea is I want you to talk about the quote. All right, go ahead. My daily conversation. My daily conversation. It consists of hustle, grinding from the bottom, sick and tired of the struggle. Kevin Gates. See, that's that's real. <laughs> that's 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 real, and that's uh that's current. <laughs> that's that's what I got to say about that. That's <laughs> current yeah, for real. <laughs> that's what I got to say about that. That's that should be shit. That that needs to be everybody mindset. Who ain't who ain't where they want to be yet? For real, that's what I think about it. That's every day. That's, that's uh. What you call it? That's like that's like a lifestyle. For real, for yeah. real. But you know, yeah, that's how that really. We try to progress yeah. daily, but nobody knows the details of how to progress daily. They don't know what it takes to you know get to what they think of and making it happen from starting to end and close. Yeah, that's nah, that's real though. I just see the end though. You know what I'm saying? And they 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 just blur out the whole middle process. The real the real part that they make. Bro, so many people like to look at what you've done and, and you know, think about the beginning and you only get the assumption like, you know, only the real one's going to last from the beginning to the end. And so many people going to try and jump on the bandwagon no matter what. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's, all, it's like that with everything, though. It's like they don't, they don't ask you uh, why you do it, then they're going to ask you how you do it. Because they're going to knock you, and then when you do it, they don't ask you for more. That's, that, that's what everything does. So I already, I'm already accepting to that. I'm already, I'm already accepting to that. That goes on. fashion, everything. So, everything. JT, bro. <laughs> I'm talking yeah. about music. Did the game choose you, or did you choose the game? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it was like a, I ain't gonna lie, I think it was like a mutual, like a mutual love, mutual agreement. I, I, I always, I always wanted, I always had the, uh, like the charisma and the energy and like, you know, just and it, I always just like to do music. But then that was my head. But then when I put it out and the people received it so well, and I feel like that was the game accepting me. You know what I'm saying? Just me putting it out and the people spreading it on their own. I feel like that was the game choosing me, but I always wanted to be a rapper. I always wanted to be 
on the stage doing some, you know, that was always what I wanted. So I can. So, bro, what would you say would be your first, like, big confirmation that, you know, music, being on the stage, rapping, doing that is, like, what you're supposed to be doing with your life? You say, what, getting confirmation that that's what I'm supposed to be doing with my life? Yep, the first big confirmation. Um, well, it's a few. I'm going to say one, though. Um, I like it. I like my music, and it ain't hard to make for me. Like, I mean, I like challenging myself, but it's not a stress. You know what I'm saying? And I really like my music. So that right there alone in itself uh, pretty much gave me a lot of confidence. Mm, that's big. Yeah, right there. That's, yeah, that alone right there. And then, and then I mean, like, the accolades and stuff that came with it, like, you know, like, uh, views on certain videos or even, like, the, like the sick with it deal, you know, all that kind of stuff. All those things kind of uh, played a part. But what I say, like, was my, was my first one was just, like, um, yeah, I don't know, just, like, the way this stuff started going up and all that. Man, right, yeah. so proven things are easy to you and they hard for hella other people. It's meant for you to be doing what you're doing. That's that, and that's 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 kind of like the approach I took. And shit, this shit ain't an easy industry. It's not easy to get millions and millions of views. It's not easy to get people to pay attention to who you are when there's a, another million people in the independent game trying to float. And what I, yes, yeah, actually, what I meant by easy too, just to clarify more, I meant like uh, more sort of making of the music and getting people to like the music. But it's always a struggle to get new listeners. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not necessarily, I would say a struggle, but it's definitely a task because that's something you always want to be doing constantly is trying to gain new audiences. So that, that do get struggled. But, but as far as the music and getting people to like react to it when they hear it is, to me, you know, is a blessing that is kind of effortless. You know what I'm saying? In my, in my situation. Shit, in every situation, the struggle is beautiful because once you triumph over the struggle, you know it's, it ain't shit. It's like, oh, boom, I run this yeah. same recipe and code, and then boom, I got the code. Facts. No, that's real, though. That's real. And then you get to look back on where you came from and where you got. That's the best in any situation. Even my hair. I be looking at videos and my hair is short, and I be like, damn, bro, I'm hella glad I stuck it out. I swear, I swear, I be like, well, I was so ugly. I was so hurt. But I thank God my, I stuck it out. That shit so paid thank off. You, bro. What's your been your like illest moment so far in the game? My illest moment? Yeah, like it's a real moment. Like, man, this shit is real. Was it like a performance? Was it like a, a event or a dinner that you you know? Was it something specific that was like, boom, this shit is real? Uh, I'm gonna say there. It was it was a few things too. Like I'm gonna say touring was one. Like being on a tour, even if just even just opening. But getting a, like a good crowd reaction for people I never seen before, and then just being, just traveling, doing, just doing, doing the shows in itself was something I was like, I, I want to do this forever. Like this is this is this is what it's about. Like this is what life is right here. You know what I'm saying? Different venues, the sound checking, all that, all that is, all that. Uh, yeah, so all that really. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then I gotta say too. Then I gotta say too. Um, when forty, uh, when I when I signed with forty two. Cause this whole process, I be kind of, you know, I, I, I've really been focused on the music, but I be kind of in and out the streets a little bit back and forth. But that, that was something that made me feel like, oh no, this needs to be like something that you really need to be focused on for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? But that was one too. I'm gonna say both of those. Mm. Bro, what's so been on, the highs and lows you face as an artist, and especially uh, in the streets and, and you know, back to the dreams and be like, man, this pile of money over here. But this pile of money over here looks better. You say, you say, you say now. You say what's the um? We say what are the highs and the lows, right? Yes, sir. Especially from being, you know, from the streets and having the streets money calling you from one side, and then being an artist, you got opportunities and activities going on the other side. You know, so That's what's some of the highs and lows of battling that? Shit, that right there is a high and a low. Like I could be in the studio. And I could be making a song that I'm not going to make no immediate money off of, but I got a player where somebody wanted to, you know what I'm saying? I just got another, I could make some money going somewhere, doing something else. I can make some immediate money. I'm going to see in my pocket that I can pay for this studio time or pay for this. So you get, you get caught up trying to get the money to pay for stuff versus actually doing it. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then like with, with rap, uh, like for a long time, you got to be real, real, like uh, innovative with your, with your money as far as making an income from rap. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm. So it's it's not always it ain't it goes through seasons sometimes where it ain't always like lucrative, you know what I'm saying? So you at least in my situation, I'll be back, you know, I gotta get out of this. <laughs> so I I mm. think I think that's probably the biggest uh challenge right there is actually being there for the music and then being to make the money because they both take time. You know what I'm saying? They both time consuming and it's only so much time. So I think that is um like the biggest struggle just trying to find time and balance, literally. Mm. Yeah, literally. What's your creative process on why you do music? What's the creative? Pro- uh, but on why you do music? On why, like why, why I do? You mean like based on like how the song, like the fit, like how do I come about like the song at the time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like how you get off the emotions to your, you know, from from your mind to your chest to to wax and to everyone's ears. Yeah. Of yeah. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. Uh, shit, a few takes, you know what I'm saying, in the booth for show. Sure. I'm gonna definitely gonna be uh, piece putting it together. But really, really, it's really go with the. It's really like a combination of beat that speaks to me, how I'm feeling at the time, and then just like the pace I'm thinking at. Like, like if I'm thinking at it, like, uh, Cause sometimes, sometimes I can be thinking so much stuff, like real rapid, and it'd be real. It'd get more difficult to like line it up and organize it. But if I could just like, like basically just relax and get like a flow and get like my clear thought of what I'm trying to project, usually, usually just kind of happen. I'm just going there and just piece it, just kind of put it together, you know. It, yeah. it's, it's real hard to explain, but I know it just start with. I know for sure it start with the beat, the vibe I'm in, and then just a clear mind on exactly what I want to do, like exactly what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Like knowing what I'm talking about. It's important to have structure, bruh. And you know, you definitely clarify that you take a lot of structure before you even step into there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a lot of, like mental structure. Like as I'm hearing the beat and I'm vibing, I'm already like thinking of melodies and what kind of what kind of vibe I'm already in. So by the time I go to the booth, you know, I'm just kinda of already on that, you know, and I'm just putting it together. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's a different kind of process, but yeah. It's, so, JP, bro, I'm going to take a pause on the music. We're going to come back to it a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and get into yeah. my awareness segment. And, you know, uh, right now it's a huge topic and shit. Honestly, it's been a huge topic since we've been, in, you know, growing up in the streets. We've been fucked with the police forever. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm talking about, you know, when the red and blue lights hit, the high beam hits the back of the neck and searches for everybody in the car, and then the blurp sound hits. And I'm talking about the time when people get pulled over. I asked all my guests, you know, when was the last time they were pulled over and what's some advice they can give to somebody in a situation of interacting with the police like that? Okay. Um, yeah, I felt, my last time getting pulled over, I think, uh, when was my last time getting pulled over? I think it was probably for like, probably like a tenth or something on a car, maybe. They just pulled me over. But I was just, Oh, actually, you know what? I don't know. They didn't actually tell me what they put me over for. Now I think about it. The last time I got pulled over. Oh, no, it wasn't tense. It wasn't tense. No, no, it wasn't tense. They didn't mention that. But um, I say just be still. <laughs> be calm, especially especially if you brown. You know what I'm saying? Be be still if possible. And uh, just try and get it over with. Like, I don't be trying to get in people no hard time. I want them gone and out my face. You know what I'm saying? What they, whatever they want, give it to them. Go ahead and take it. I ain't got nothing more to say, nothing less to say. Just take it and then write the ticket and let me go. I'm not here to do the arguing. And I, 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 I suggest that to a lot of people being argumentative with police or stuff. It don't really prove nothing in the moment. Just let them, as long as they ain't being disrespectful to you or even sometimes when they is being extra, this system set up for them to win. So just get your ticket and get on, get on. You know what I'm saying? Don't even, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't saying take no disrespect, but I'm saying don't. Don't even give it no time for that to happen. Just try to make it as brief as possible. No, that's the realest that's thing advice. you can tell somebody is to handle it quickly. And if you know it's going bad, tell them to take you to jail. Yeah, <laughs> Man, for real. Yeah. You can do the paperwork. Yeah. You don't like it. Yeah, you ain't yeah, you ain't lying though, for real. For real, for real. You ain't lying. Jail way better than losing your life. Oh god. Bro, this is called OR. When you get released on your own recognizance, and boy, that's only a two, three hour hold. So, you know, sometimes yeah. that's all it takes. 
Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, so that's what I advise people, though. Just, uh, just try and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? Don't do all, ain't no need for all the fast talking because ain't gonna get proved right there. You know what I'm saying? Just get your, get your ticket, whatever. You know, keep your hands up and go. You know what I'm saying? Ain't even know. So, bruh, uh, I appreciate you spreading the knowledge on my awareness segment. And, you know, as we just got a little serious, I'm about to go ahead, take it to the next level and mess with your brain a little bit. I got this segment <laughs> called Trading Places. And it's just like the Dan Network, Eddie Murphy movie. They wake up and, you know, the lives have changed. And I take that concept. Yeah. And we take two people and we swap their lives. And, you know, today I got young people yeah. trading places with Danny Trejo. Danny who? Danny Trejo? Yeah, the uh, you know the Cholo actor. Uh, the one, uh, the one who's in um, but he in all the movies. Um, I'm, I think I know what you're talking about. Was he in like, remember the old school like Kazam movie? Kazam. The old school or like with Shaq? Let me see, bro. What's the what's the movie? That he, he in so many movies. Oh, you seen Crank? With, huh? with Jason Statham, you seen the movie Crank with Jason Statham where he can't stop running? Yeah. Really gonna die? Was he in that movie? Yes. I think I'm. Yeah, he kind of funny. Yeah, bro. I know you're talking about. Uh, oh, that guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just talking to somebody else. I know who that guy. Is, so. Oh yeah, I know who that guy. Is. So okay, we got yeah, you think? Trejo, yeah. Trading places with Jeezy. Question number one is: Will it work? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, though. Maybe. Yeah, I think it could work. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I think it could. <laughs> I think it randomly will work, probably. Right, now you got these pretty much acting in all the movies. He being this hardcore gangster from the video. And then now you got Danny, Danny Trejo, you know, USDA, really putting on for the South. And then, you know, he a part of Janky Promoters, all of that. Do you think, what would be one thing different oh, if they traded places? Like, if they traded places, like, in in, those, in a movie role? Yeah, bro. Like, you know, if they traded places in real life, what would be one thing different? Uh, uh, what's the name of cut his hair, for sure. All that long hair. Jeezy gonna have to chop all that off, for sure. <laughs> He's gonna be bald-headed. And then, other than that, uh, let me see. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. That's a, that's a different one. <laughs> That's a good one, though. I really don't know, bro. I really couldn't tell you. But I know they probably both be on some, like, like, I don't know, loyalty kind of stuff. Or, like, you know, all that moral, like, real deep morals and stuff like that. I know Jeezy preaching that. And I know that's, like, you know, being, being in the brown community, you know, like, they pride and all that kind of stuff and, like, loyalty. Man. I think that common ground is cool. Bro, in L.A., Trejo got a, a taco spot. I feel like Jeezy would trade the taco spot to still have tacos, but it'd be like like soul food tacos. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, see shit like that. Exactly. Shit like that. Exactly. And in the movies he'd be in, he'd probably uh I don't know, he'd probably be uh probably play a different character for sure, like a different role. <laughs> All right, bro. You survived my trading places segment. I got one last segment for you. It's called Impulse Q and A. It's like card questions on cards. And they like from a fan yeah. perspective. So, you know, I'm about to hit you with a few. Uh, you got to answer three questions. You could pass if you don't want to answer the question, but you still got to answer three. You ready? All right, go for it. Question number one. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Coleslaw. <laughs> <laughs> Coleslaw, that's the most nasty thing I've ever ate too, probably. Uh -huh. Coleslaw, oh, and, and alligator. Alligator wasn't nasty, but alligator. Man, was it gritty? Tastes like chicken, kind of. <laughs> no lie. Bro, I'm mad. Why does everything got to taste like chicken? You eat some snake, yeah, it tastes <laughs> like chicken. You eat some rabbit, it tastes like chicken. You eat some frog, Bro, it tastes you. like chicken. No, and I really heard about frog too. I really heard. I, I almost ate a frog leg, but I didn't. But they had them though. Bro, they had them. But that's the sort of weirdest thing I eat though. Coleslaw, alligator, and almost almost frog. 
<laughs> Question number two. What's the funniest thing you've seen a kid do? Funniest thing I've seen a kid do? <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was chilling with my partner, and he was and he used to um, he used to talk to this girl who had like a son, you know. But I guess he the 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 girl was messing with him, kind of like on some on the low, like a secret. And the girl was with her son, and they was riding by, and the son was like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> and said his name, like just. Shout his name out hella loud through the back seat, and the dude was with her. <laughs> and the dude looking like, how you know him like that? And they was, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was wild. That was the craziest. Uh, that was probably the craziest. Real last moment. And then, oh, another note. That movie, uh, Good Boys, was hella funny too. Everything them kids was doing was hella funny. <laughs> On another note. Bruh, they were doing shit that we wish we could get away with growing up. <laughs> That's Bruh. Question number three. What is something what? you think but you wish you loved? You said what is what? What is what is something, something, that, something that what? What is something you hate but you wish you loved? Something that I hate that, but I love. That you wish you loved. Oh, that I wish I was? You said that I wish I was? No, that you wish you loved. <laughs> oh, that I wish I loved? Yeah. What's something I wish I loved? Uh, hate it. Oh, one thing I hate that, but I wish I loved it? Oh, I wish I loved... Oh, that's that's a good one, too. I wish I loved... Uh, there's a lot of shit. I wish I was one of the people who, like, hype. And like being hella adventurous, like the sky, the sky, uh, parasailing and stuff like that off the mountains. I wish I like. I wish I. I wish I didn't hate heights. Okay. And I wish I. Did, I wish I didn't hate um. Big big bodies of water too, because I'd be I'd be out here searching. <laughs> I would go <laughs> in the ocean, but I'm a, I don't want to get. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I'm gonna say heights. I'm gonna say that. I wish I wasn't afraid of heights. And, you know all that kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you survived my awareness segment. You survived my uh, trading places segment. You survived my impulse Q and A segment, man. Mm -hmm. uh, bro, you know, let's promote. Let's talk about what you're working on. What projects you're working on, man? We got a new album coming out. What's the deal? All right. So right now, I'm in the process. My whole album getting mixed down right now. Mm. It's called. Uh, New chapter. So our new chapter basically just stating the fact that it's a new chapter. Overall, I'm I'm uh, I'm no longer uh, signed. You know, I'm 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 uh, independent. I'm, I'm just I'm staying consistent. I've been working a bunch of you know recording a bunch of material. We're just in a different space right now. So it's just literally a new chapter. So I ain't you know me and my me and my management team ain't really want to overthink it. Kept it kept it simple and. Uh, I got. I'm gonna have a bunch of videos coming out. I got a song called "Bleed It," "Made of Stone." I got a few records coming out that will be dropping real soon. Um, out your new yeah. album or the songs coming out? Which one's your favorite? Uh, I got a song. Um, let me see. What would be my favorite song? I got a song called "Can't Save Her." Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I got a song called "Look at My Life" with Steady Hendrick on there. I like a lot. Uh, I just did a song called uh, Oh, I did a song called Like to Need Me. That's probably right as of right now, that's probably one of my favorite songs. Mm, okay. Like okay. to Need Me. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with that one. Man, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm, uh, I'm gonna say like to need me. So What's gonna be the first video you do that we get to see? You said what's the first video? Yup, that you're going to do that the world gets um, to see. First video, uh, uh, it's probably going to be Made of Stone. A record I did called Made of Stone. Yup. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. It, it, it's going to come out probably in about maybe like two two weeks or so. Is that what I'm saying? Um, like, but yeah, it's going to be coming out in like two weeks though. Oh, yeah, bro. Uh, 
man, man, big shout outs to Willie Joe. I appreciate you, brother, setting up the interview and plugging me with JT the fourth. Appreciate you. Yeah, shout out to Willie Joe, man. Yeah, sure. Yeah, bro, you know, the show is different, it's unique. You know, I try to stay on the topics like the big shows, but I don't ask none of them questions like they do. And I'm like, <laughs> how, how do I keep that same energy towards the end of the show and close out? And you know my viewers knows it's coming and I'm finna hit you with it. You got any questions for me? Hmm, that is that's a good one though. What made you wanna start doing this? Shit, bro, hell of people telling me no, I can't get into something. No, I can't have this uh, at the job at the radio station. No, I can't join the podcast. And I got all these relationships. And I was a kid actor, all type of shit, bro. You know, from the streets. And, like, bro, ain't no way you're gonna deny me. So, you know, I started doing it on my own. Thing. And then yeah. you know, some big people got involved with me, and you know, I appreciate them greatly. And yeah, I get to talk today. Yeah, no, nah, that's fire. That's good, though. You can do it how you want it, too. Yeah, that's fire. I'm not going to do it. But yeah, no, nah, that's fire. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I, uh, let's see. I, I, really, I, really, I really think what you're doing, though. For real, though. For artists in general, though. Like, each one's outside of myself. You know, just shining the light and giving you know, more information on, on, on the artist. You know what I'm saying? Versus just, you know, what's, what's already out. So no, nah, that's, that's a good, that's a service, though. For real, honey. Yeah, appreciate that, bro. God, cause I'm a fan of your music, bro. Number one, like, cause, bro, you got, you got, how you see your segments, bro, is incredible, bro. Your transition, how you know how to keep your voice and key. Like a lot of people, you know, that up with this, you know, the new music. Contrast a cut in season three. Episode 13, big shout out to Uncle Drew Army and Bobby B. Presents. I appreciate you, bro. I want to go and do incredibly dope shit like interviewing this brother next to me, JT the Four, and talking, you know, that big smoke, that big dope, that real game. You know, diamonds from the sky, let the dances they drop. You know what I'm talking about? I appreciate you, bro. Straight like that. 100, bro. Appreciate you the same way you already know. Yeah, 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 man. It's JT the fourth, aka number four, man. We in here with contrast uncut, man. Shout out Snoop Army, man. And shout out Bobby T, you know what's going on. Here. Man, I know you guys can't smell this right now, and I ain't talking about none of that other stuff. I'm talking about some of that good stuff, that smell good stuff. I think it's breakfast. What time is it? It's breakfast time. Make sure you tune in to Contrast Uncut no matter what you're doing. Whether you're eating breakfast, you're smelling good food like I'm smelling, or if you're smelling other stuff, we're good to watch too. Make sure you tune in. Thank you.